Bam, we're live. <laughs> Kenneth, what's up? The way to get a million subscribers, TikTok reels, hours of hard work and dedication, probably. Morning, friends. We had this uh we had this radio show at um we had this radio show at CrossFit. Uh I I forget what it was called. I even forget who the host of it was. It was two guys. I, I can't remember their names. I wish I could remember their names. One of the guys I think was a high school wrestling coach. Hey Caleb, what's up? Good morning. Uh, and they had a hey Jeff, what's up? Uh they had a they had a uh a, a show there. It was called a radio show. It was long I think it was God, this thing was been around since like two thousand four, five, six. I can't even remember. But basically they Maybe it was you could even call it a podcast. I don't even know where they published it. But basically, at the point that I took over media, I kind of um, I moved them along. I tried to get them to be a little more high energy and say, "Good morning, Athena. Good morning, Austin." I tried to get them to say a little more, um, to be edgier, to be more provocative, not forced, but but just just give it, um, ask questions that maybe otherwise they would feel uncomfortable asking or they didn't think were appropriate for the platform. Maybe it was Justin Junkins. Was that the guy's name? Anyway, the show never got off the ground. I, I want to say they did an episode every week for fucking like 10 years, and it never had more than like 200 viewers unless they had like Dave on. Then it would have like a couple thousand viewers. Adam, good morning. And so then that went away, and then we started the uh, CrossFit podcast, and then that went away. But uh, to get to a million um, – subscribers like this guy did austin alexander it's pretty uh it's pretty crazy it's pretty damn crazy good morning good morning oh, i here. love it thank you wow i know I'm, I'm two minutes late no i just this this in this scene it's so hardcore it's crazier it's more it's more chaotic than my background oh my yeah my garage yeah my girlfriend uh pushed me out to the garage so this is my studio but at least I get the whole space. There's my puppy in the background right there licking yeah. random stuff. Yeah. Hey, what's that white box in the corner? Is, it, is that one? a cof coffee? No, uh, sorry. This yeah, one? yeah, over there. Yeah. That's an air fryer. Oh. My girlfriend streams live on Amazon. It's like a live home shopping network. Uh -huh. She'll send her shit all the time. So, uh, do you actually use that air fryer? Uh, No. Do you want it? <laughs> she has four of them. Okay, uh, I, that's really cool. You, I, lo I love you already. And I really like the um, turquoise luggage above your head. Yep. yep Easy that. to pick out when it comes over the conveyor belt. Uh, that's mine. Yep. But what really chubs me up is the gimbal I see. Oh, yeah. You a video guy? Oh, my God. Yum oh, wait till, wait till you see all this stuff right here. Yumlito. I this love all it. video gear. Oh, I love that's a gimbal. Canon, some black magics over there. You can't really see them, but yeah. What, what, Austin? What is your? Do you, are, are you? Do you handle the camera a lot yourself? Or did yes. you used to? Yeah, I, I started off vlogging, and then I got into lenses and cameras, and started uh, making more cinematic stuff. But I never used to have a camera guy until about two years ago, and then now instead of me doing the filming, I'm getting filmed. So it's pretty great. Yeah, congratulations, by the way. Um, Thank you. Did, did you did you have a favorite? Were you a Canon guy or a Sony guy or an iPhone guy? Or did you have a favorite? I started off with a Canon. So Canon's always going to have a place in my heart, but we use all Sony now. And, and which Canon did you use? I started off with the T5i. Wow. It was Get actually. Oh, good it was job. A, thank you. It was called a 700D. I mean, humble. I mean, humble. Sorry, not ghetto. Humble. Very humble of you. Yeah. I mean, I bought it used for $300. I bought it when I was overseas in Bahrain. It was called a 700D, but it's equivalent to the North American T5i. Yep. Yeah, there, there it is right there. Brings back good memories. Look at that. 2100 five star. God, I'm loving you. And then and then in Sony, are you uh what Sony are you guys using? I started off with the 6400. Mm -hmm. I just love the versatility. It did 1080 120. Yeah. Like, Man, that's great. No other camera did 1080 120 at the time for the price point of the 6400. I mean, I'm sorry, 6300. Yeah. Actually, Look at right you. Here. Hey, they, you know that that whole line, I mean, obviously, obviously you know now, it's kind of nice that it kind of went, I mean, it was it was a great line, small, easy, sl mm -hmm. killer slow-mos, but now we now we got the A7S three, and it's like done. I love the A7s. We have a <laughs> it's A7 just like, 
We have an A7R three uh -huh. for photo and a Sony FX three for video. Oh wow! Okay, wow. I I never I, one time I got an FX. That that's like the actual video camera proper, right? That's camera cams, yeah. Yeah, it was too. It was too oh, I got overwhelmed. I, but but I but the whole A seven line, the R's, the A sevens. But I ended up like my go to is uh, I have a couple A seven S threes, and and because of the same reason like you you like the sixty four hundred because it does that um not ten eighty one twenty now but now it's ten eighty two forty. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, right? It's it's crazy. Yeah, this is an A seven S two we picked up probably like three years ago. And, yeah. Our FX3 is over there in the corner. What do you have on that? Is that a fixed? Yep, this is a Zeiss 55 millimeter. Yes. And and the two people don't know this, ladies and gentlemen, the two best lenses maybe ever made, and I'm a huge Leica fan and I'm a crazy, is that lens, that 55 fixed, it is it bouquets like a mofo. And yeah. do you have the 24 also? The cheapy, I shouldn't say cheapy, it's still expensive, but it's not. What? The pancake? Uh, not the pancakes. We don't use a lot of wide stuff because I love the the bokas in the background. This one, it's it's in that same. It's not the G Master series. It's this one. It's like this. Actually, just let me like the one. fifty five. It, it's so. it's it's a one eight. It is so cool. I mean, it's not even a special lens, but nothing shoots better than this. Nothing shoots better. I am nerdy now. Here's what's crazy. He did all of this. Let's see what we got. He got his hands. He got his hands dirty. Oh, here's the old uh, 6300 nostalgia. This is what I started my YouTube channel on. Dang. Hey, do uh, you have just like 20 of those batteries laying around that you're like, what yeah. am I going to do with these? Yep. I gave them to my my uh, video video guy. He does a lot of video stuff on his own. And I just said, here, you can have all this. I gave him the lenses for the APS-C lenses and everything. God, you're a good dude. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, are video, you a Zen? Are you a Zen guy? I am. Yeah. Oh, but you don't swallow. I don't. Yeah. Good on burns, you. Wow. Burn, burns my throat. Makes me dizzy. I started the nicotine. I was prepping down for a bodybuilding show in twenty nineteen, uh -huh. and I became so lethargic because the dieting was so aggressive. I was falling asleep at the wheel, and yeah. I said, "I need something to wake me up." So I was consuming excessive amounts of caffeine i was drinking like two bangs a day and wow that is hardcore my heart would would palpitate i was like i'm doing this show one way or another i need a way to to stay awake and stay energized so i went straight for the grizzly winter greens and after probably about a year of doing it i was like i cannot do that but i love the feeling of nicotine i don't do a whole lot of caffeine nicotine it doesn't speed my heart rate up it just allows me to stay focused and so that's why I'm glad a product came out like Zen. It's tobacco free and I don't spit it. I just get, get the, uh, the focus of the nicotine. Uh, are you a two, a four or a six? I'm a six. Oh, they do threes and sixes. Yeah. Six. Oh, oh who, who does the twos? It's probably rogue or I'm not sure. I was, uh, I, 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 um, used to smoke a lot of cigarettes and then I stopped. And then I, when the va a long time ago, I stopped when I'm 50 now, I stopped when I was probably like 34. Mm -hmm. And then, um, when vape pens came out, I fucked with them. Wow. Wow. Like the jewel. I fuck with the jewel for just a minute. It's like, uh, I almost feel bad for anyone who picked it up. Not almost. I do feel bad for you. It's like, yeah. for, it, it is a fucking, it was so crazy. And you then I fucked with the, the, those zins or whatever. The, and, uh, that was those were, i'm so glad those were really hard to quit but i but nicotine is like got to be one of the most amazing drugs ever that people don't really realize how amazing mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. i don't I, I don't feel any negative effects from the nicotine i don't feel like it's hindered my performance i feel like i just used to focus i get great sleep about seven to eight hours a night i monitor my rim sleep my diet's on point and i feel great and you have great skin Thank you very much. Well, I used to break out a little when I was a kid and I was yeah, so self-conscious. I would just carve at my face. I would get mad that my face was breaking. I would just fucking carve my face. And Is that, uh, was that your spot up here for your zits? Yeah, right here and then along my chin line. Yeah. I got them around my lip. Oh, yeah. Those are painful. Yeah. I hate those. 
Or how about the ones that I call as underground uh, volcanic activity? I still get one of those every year. No one can see it, but it feels mm -hmm. like there's a marble under my skin and it fucking hurts. Yeah. It, that's like a cyst, right? <laughs> no. Oh. I call it a pimple. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you yeah. said underground lava activity and I was yes, like, that was like probably, a cyst. <laughs> you're probably right. Um, so. Yes. Hi. I'm Sevon. Uh, nice to meet you, Savon. Uh, you're Austin Alexander. We met uh, through uh, Hunter McIntyre. Yes, yes, we did. Yes, we did. He just, um, he's like, hey, this is my guy. So-and-so, this is my guy. So-and-so. And he, like, confused me with the, the scheduling. So uh, I was supposed to be on, when was it? Sun it was Sunday. Yeah. and I Last Sunday? It. Yep. No, this week, like, beginning of the week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the shows are live. Mm-hmm. So, so when when the guest doesn't show up, I, I I just I just curse your name for like twenty yeah. minutes, just nonstop. And I, I have a doll. I, I I have a doll, and I start putting pins in it. Yeah, I, you know I notice like I started bleeding randomly on Sunday. Maybe, <laughs> that, maybe that's what it was from. I always have a um a live call in show ready. Mm -hmm. So I got this notes of just crazy shit I see on Instagram. And then, and then basically it's like a, a low rent version of Tosh.0. Nice. I like it. And instead of just being, instead of being um, funny stuff, it's really just all just me just pouring out my hatred. Hatred's too strong. Let's use a different word. Point out my disappointment in the, in woke culture. Yeah. I like it. Thank you. Uh, but you can't do that on your YouTube account. I mean, you I can't. When you I have a million can't. subscribers, you have to be careful, right? You know what? I don't. I don't think I'm. People don't want to cancel me because I'm not super controversial, and I think I'm in that median point where like people just don't care about me, which is great. Yeah. Um. You know, big big people like you know ten, twenty, fifty, hundred million subscribers, they may go after them, but with me, no. What did you think? Um, well, I got I got a buddy who's um, got uh, three three million plus YouTube subscribers mm -hmm. and a big production uh, facility and a bunch of fucking homes. He's loaded off his YouTube page. He don't want to come anywhere near me. Like when Who we talk, it? he's like, "Stay back, stay back, buddy." Who is it? I can't. I don't want to say. I don't want to like. Put, oh, put him under okay. the I'll, t I'll tell you afterwards i think okay. probably everyone knows who he is uh, uh, who watches the show but um he wants nothing to do with me i mean we're and i don't blame him i don't well, fuck he, sh shit up he can just refuse to answer stuff that you ask i guess i mean it's not not too hard true true right <clears throat> you I, just, I just subscribe and i appreciate that Austin Alexander, I could when when um when Hunter told me that he has this buddy who has a million of subscribers on YouTube, I seriously thought he was exaggerating. Really? Because Hunter don't have friends. Uh, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's um, I work my ass off, and probably just jealousy on my part and denial that that anyone could be better than me and my um nineteen thousand. I'm exaggerating. 18,976 subscribers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, no way has anyone have a million. Well, your mine have been picked up over the last, I don't know how long you've been doing this show, but over the last four years. Yeah, you're dope. So that's why I have these bags under my eyes. You can't really see them, but I don't get a, I used to not get a lot of sleep. Like with, when I was in the Navy, it was just work for the Navy and then make videos, sleep two hours, repeat. <laughs> There's a guy I have on the show, um, uh, period. Well, there's a guy in the background here, Caleb, who works for the Air Force, and he's deployed right now. I trip that he comes on every show. Maybe you'll see him periodically. He's in, he's running the back end. Did you see him he's already? One that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as soon as I came in, he was like dipped. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Okay. Then there's another guy on Fridays. I do a. Um, he probably loves it when guests don't show up because that means it's me and him do the show together. Yeah. I should ask him that, Caleb. Hi. Are, are you stoked when guests don't show up? You're like, yeah, fuck yeah, some star, some Terrifying. camera time. Terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> All right. Are you, are you in like a medical uh, facility? Yeah. Where are you? Can you say where you're deployed right now? No. No? Hey, must must have decent internet. Is it Bahrain? No, it's not Bahrain. Bahrain's not a deployment. Okay. <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't ask any questions. We can talk afterwards. 
Okay. Cool. I oh, like your your, au- your audio is fucked today, uh, Caleb. I don't know what that was. Well, he's deployed. Give him a break. I know, but usually it's so good. <laughs> uh, so, um, there's this. Uh, there's this. Do you know who Coppola is? Francis Ford Coppola in the movie Apocalypse Now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a, a old movie, and uh, Marlon Brando is in it. So, so it's a war movie. Anyway, when when Coppola made this movie, he spent every single cent he had, and he had a he had a farm and a vineyard, and he mortgaged them, and he spent every cent he had to make this movie. That's crazy. And uh, I, I heard you recently say that you are using your life savings to do Battle Bunker. Yes. So. That when I heard that, I was like, "Wow, this is badass!" And you don't have kids yet, right? No kids. Yeah, you're doing it right. An expensive girlfriend, though. I understood. Understood. Tell me. Um, I guess we have to go back just a little bit. One more. Oh, one more quick thing. Where I was going. So there's another guy on this show who has fi- who comes on the show on Fridays. He has five million uh, TikTok su- TikTok subscribers. Mm-hmm. His name's Justin Nunley, and he's in the Air Force, Caleb. And I don't know, did, did they ever, and I just can't believe they haven't kicked him out yet. Like he's too famous. Justin Dan- Danger Nunley? Yeah, that guy. Okay. Um, he's got like half a million on Instagram and like 5.2 million on TikTok. He's in the and, Air Force now, are you sure? Yeah. He's got a beard. He must have a shaven shit. Uh, he, and he's killing it financially. I mean, it's it's like Good raining. It's I know, isn't it great to hear that? It's yeah. raining cash on them. Um, did, when you were building this YouTube station and you were in the Navy, did did you ever get a talking to? I got more than talking to. I was investigated by NCIS. It, it, NC Naval Criminal Investigation Services or something like that. Yeah. W- was it something like you were using their cameras and shit, or like you borrowed one of their microphones, or? No, it was. There's still a big gray area in social media. A lot of the branches have calmed down now because it's bringing them exposure but when i was starting i would do um like if i was at work and i showed up an hour early i would say all right we can film a video and i I was doing videos like military pay and i was wearing the uniform and there was a gray area i was never sponsoring products or saying hey buy this in uniform that's where the gray area is you can't use uniform to sell services but i was monetizing on the same channel that i was wearing the uniform uh, uh, uh. and which is still not in any regulation and i had f- familiarized myself with the regulation like the back of my hand and so i knew all the all the rules and regulations but i asked a ship i said can i come on and and make a video i think it would be cool to show the audience and give more information to the audience about certain navy rates and jobs you mean like a boat when you say ship a boat like it's something in the water you went on a ship yeah well when i think boat i think 30 foot or smaller but this was a a destroyer a ship it's like right okay how many feet it is but yeah this these go on deployment and the open oceans where there are 30 40 foot swells you know like shark ain't got nothing on this thing exactly yeah and i guess the ship was like, who is this guy? A few of their people looked into my stuff and said, we don't know if this is okay or not. Let's let's bring this up to the Navy JAG. And then NCIS got a hold of it. And they're like, well, I guess they were thinking, worst case scenario, we can learn something from this. We can kind of learn how this is working because we know there are, you know, two or three other people in the Navy that are doing it, two or three people in the Air Force, Army, you know. And... If you think about it, military members have been writing blogs for 30 years or 20 years doing the same exact thing. So that's my thought process. Just because the blogs d- didn't have the reach that my YouTube channel had, you know, they weren't b- being investigated. So they put me under investigation. It was like, for me, I was freaked out because I was like, well, here I am getting investigated by NCIS. They could do anything. They could throw me in the brig. They could strip my pay for the next two years. They could make you, they could inject you with something you don't want to be injected with. They Exactly. Yeah. They can literally do anything. I couldn't and, resist Caleb. Sorry. <laughs> Poor Caleb. Um, and yeah, for like a month and a half, two months, I was investigating. I was having to provide 
reports and summaries. And even though I was checking in with the officer at the time, he's like, to be honest, MA2 or Alexander, my rate was MA2. He's like, I don't know why I'm having to investigate you, but I'm, I'm doing a deep dive on all your channels. He said, not that I wanted to, but I had to watch 13 hours of your YouTube channel. He said, I can't <laughs> find, he's like, I can't find anything that, that we should be investigating you for, but I still have to keep you under investigation for, you know, whatever. How old uh, were you? Uh, 26 or 27. Okay. It's, 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 and it, did you tell your parents about this when this is going down? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And did you get a lawyer? Did you lawyer up? No, I didn't. Oh. I, I mean, like oh. this was for me, I hadn't, I didn't really have to do any defensive because it's not like I was, it's not like I murdered someone. Right. You know, it was just a gray area that's not written in the policy. And, and so, the thing is, just to be clear, so the thing is, is you weren't selling buck knives that you were making in your garage. The only thing you were doing is, is you were making these videos that might show like, hey, it takes 3,000 gallons of soap and four men 17 hours to clean the deck of this boat. But you made some a few pennies on it monetizing it. Exactly. And, and so they're like tripping. Well, this is good that he's showing this job. And these are it's, it's like a National Geographic show with one of our own. But he, he made some money. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And, I love and this story. I, I wasn't speaking or talking about the products. Right. It was just the content was on YouTube, which is monetized through YouTube's ads. Right. You weren't like, hey, if I was the Chinese, I would just drop chewing gum on this ship and it would go down like that. Yeah. I wouldn't say anything <laughs> like that. Right, okay. wouldn't, wouldn't talk about the products, no, no right. political, no religious stuff. Like, right. anyways, here's where the story gets good. Okay. So, about a month and a half into the investigation, whole command knows I'm under investigation for. Um, or with NCIS and we get a call to the boathouse. It was me and about 20 people that worked there. And they said, there's an admiral coming here, which is unheard of for Seal Beach. Seal Beach is a Naval weapons station is a tiny command over in Seal Beach, California, close to Long Beach. And so we start freaking out. We start, you know, checking the, the boat logs, making sure everything's clean and tidy. Like people were just losing their shit. Cause it's an admiral, you know, which is an, O. Eight, oh nine, yeah, oh eight, oh nine, which is a massive rank in the Navy. So we start cleaning up all of our stuff around the around the place, making it look tidy, um, brushing up on our our safety briefs and everything. And he gets there, pulls up in a black SUV. Two of them roll up, him and a uh, few chain of command, and I think my commanding officer was there from the base. And we're all at attention. They call it attention on deck. We all stand at attention. And he's like, hey, at ease, guys. At ease, guys. I'm just here to see MA2 Alexander. My heart just starts. I thought they were going to you know, take me to the brig or something. He's, uh, he said front and center in front of the whole boathouse. And he reached his hand out. He shook my hand. He said, I just want to say I'm a big fan of your videos. I, I love your videos. I love what you're doing for the Navy. You're shining a positive light. And in his hand was a coin was the chief of information's coin, which they control all content that goes out for the U.S. Navy. And he said, I, I love your stuff. I think you're, you're doing a great thing. Keep it up. And they basically just left. <laughs> wow. And an hour later, or like two hours later, I get a call from that JAG officer. He said, hey, Alexander, you're, you're good. You're free and clear. You're not under investigation anymore. You're not in trouble. You know, keep up the good work. And then that was it. From then yeah. on. Was the case closed at that point officially or? It's closed, yeah. So I think the Admiral came down and was like, signed some paperwork. And he was like, hey, y'all, quit investigating this guy. He's a good dude. So, God, they sound smarter than um, CrossFit Inc. CrossFit Inc. should do that to me. They should call me and be like, hey, we're sorry. Uh, we fired you uh, two years ago. Here's uh, $1.2 million. Uh, let's say $1.5 million in back pay. Uh, you're the greatest chief marketing officer that ever walked the planet. And, uh, and here's a check for 1.5 million and here's a, I'd get a coin too. Right. Or would that can non-military people do I mean, coins? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the, I'll take a coin. That's the least they could do. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And then maybe have Dave Castro fucking wash my uh, car in a fucking, uh, bikini and a, and your, uh, and your feet in a speedo. Yeah. I don't wish that on anyone. My feet. <laughs> that's funny. It reminds me of the, uh, dumb and dumber where they're having to get, pedicures 
for their feet and they they they're sawing his toenails with that you've seen the movie right i have but i don't remember it can't even remember yesterday um so after that my chain of command would kind of pick and prod at me for the videos after that i was invincible they didn't say a thing to me wow that's Still awesome man. yeah it was a good, was a good and, and then what and then you were in for seven years and when um don't you normally like you're in for four years and then if you re-enlist you go for another four years so four plus four is eight how did you get out in seven that the numbers don't add up right yeah so i went originally went into the navy as navy diver and which was a six-year term a committed contract and i went through dive training went through the whole prep and everything and i didn't make it through the final in water procedures when i did that i had to re-rate to a different job which is master at arms is naval security and that, you did that in, which year that was in year two you did that pretty much in year two yeah like okay. so i was in that i navy. watched that video where you talked about that it's a fascinating video by the way if anyone wants to hear about his journey through uh going through diving there's a great video on his youtube channel that talks about trying to become a navy diver thank you yeah it was uh it was tough for me because i had trained you know for a year plus in order to maintain those scores for navy diver and when i didn't pass that that test they were like dip you're out yeah you were a badass though you you it's just, sorry i know I'm, I'm derailing the story but you were the there were there were kind of like two scores like on the sat english and math there was like in the water and out of the water and in your in your class you had the highest out of water scores of anyone right yeah i was i was the best land pt person in my dive class for sure yeah that's dope okay sorry i derailed your story no it's it's so good after that, I, they sent me back. They said, okay, you have to choose what you're going to do for the next four to six years. You can either be a corpsman, the medical field. I didn't really want to do that. Sorry if you're uh, in the medical field. Caleb. Caleb's shaking his head like this. <laughs> but I just, in the Navy, it's, it's hard to make rank as a corpsman because there's so many of them. And then they gave me, okay, you can be on a ship as an undesignated, which is not a job that you want to have. And they said, you also have MA. I said, what's MA? They said, it's Naval Security. I said, give it to me. So I went to That's Texas. Where you drive around in a Jeep and grab drunk dudes and bring, from bars and bring them back? Overall, like the movies? overall, yes. But after Master at Arms School, I penciled my way into the harbor unit, which is a great, a great job. I loved it. We got to go fast in boats in the harbor, just drive around, act like badasses with a machine. In, in, in which harbor? Which state? Started off in Bahrain, overseas in the Middle East. It was pretty, I won't say pretty intense because other service members may compare it to Afghanistan or something like that. It's like, um, it was a little heated over there. That's when Iran was acting up, still are, but um, they were, you know, capturing our dudes off the coast and the Coast Guard cutters would get threatened all the time. They bombed the HSV-2 Swift. Like they were doing a lot of stuff over there, but we were protecting the harbor. Yep, there it is right there, right beside Saudi Arabia. And if you look up top, you'll see that's a country, Bahrain. It's a it's a kingdom. Okay. Yeah. The Saudi it's actually man made. Saudi Arabia, the king of Saudi Arabia, his brother was gifted that island. And I guess they they built it out. And when you say man made, that's landfill. Yep. You see a bridge that goes across that's that's made and it's they dredge out the ocean and just dump a bunch of rocks and dirt and they made they made that island. Wow. You and, see and how it, it's recognized as in the UN, Bahrain. Like they got like a dude there who's like, women are equivalent to cattle. They cannot vote. It's not it's not as bad as like uh, Saudi Arabia or like Afghanistan, I Iraq. It's I believe it has some ties with the UK, but it's pretty um it's pretty neutral over there, I would say. Lots but of it is, but but it's its own country and shit. It's its own kingdom, yeah. Kingdom, I don't know, kingdom. I don't know how they identify it as a kingdom, but yeah, it's a kingdom. Yeah. Uh, pull pull out even more, Caleb. I still don't know where we're at. I know we're on Earth. <laughs> I need to just see a little bit more. See, okay. South of Iran and Afghanistan. Okay. Oh, I see Southwest India Africa. over there. Oh, okay, there we are. It's the most four deployed base that America has. That's close. It's in the Middle East. So so basically, the Middle East is just the, the chunk of land that between uh, India and Africa. Pretty much, I never yeah. thought of it like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Middle East. And uh, um, the Middle East is part of the – which continent is the Middle East part of? Which, you got some, some in Africa. Some, some consider I mean, it's, probably, uh, Somalia and Egypt, some of the, the Middle East. <clears throat> and then it's between – what is that, Europe? So I'm a, I'm a, I'll, just, yeah. I'll, just ask, I'll just ask Google. Close this page where I was asking Google this morning which gender I am <laughs> and open up uh, – which continent is the Middle East? Oh yeah, you're right. Asia and right. Africa. They got they 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 split between Asia and Africa. All right, fine. Be that way. Um. So so then so we were we were headed towards how you got out. So so if you were, if you committed to six. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then it, oh, and at the two year year mark, you re up for four. No no no. I I never re enlisted. I never re-upped okay um, so i spent uh as an ma you go i think it's three years sea duty and three years shore duty even though i was technically on the shore in bahrain it was considered sea duty so after bahrain i left i went to lamore california with vfa2 strike fighter squadron 2 they flew uh fa18 super hornets and the rest of us attached to that squadron were in support of the pilots and I said they, they had me staying there for three years and I said hey I'm gonna stay on sea duty for like four years I was like I want to rotate to shore because in the navy shore duty is like uh it's like a cake it's a cake yep there it is right there beautiful beautiful piece yeah. of machinery yeah that's awesome and uh I called the detailer I was like yo it's time to rotate me to to shore duty and he looked at my contract and they still had the obligated six year in there and they never switched it from my navy dive time to my master at arms time so they said okay we'll we'll rotate you to shore we just don't want to do all the paperwork to to redo your commitment if you're going to stay in longer than one term and i said i am so when they signed me to seal beach when you said that i am um, was that kind of like an out-of-body experience like you're like holy fuck! I just made yeah. that a decision what? just right here and now. Like what the fuck? My whole, I just added two years to my shit. Or yep. It and then like it's so. Were you like who said that? Hold on. <laughs> it's I'm I'm not a I'm great at executing. I'm terrible at planning. So I wasn't thinking about anything else. I was like, well, I don't have anything else. So I guess I'll just be obligated to stay in. I have to stay in. What am I going right. to do? Am I going to go back to cutting grass and making pizzas in Alabama? But when really you said that, no one knew that. Your mom didn't know that. Your dad didn't know that. It was just you and that dude all of a sudden were the only two people on the planet who knew you just committed to, fuck, that's intense. Yep, another another uh, two years initially. Because when, yeah. when I went to Seal Beach, it was a two-year commitment. And when I was there, I loved the command. I, I loved the people there. I loved my job. You know, it was close to L.A. I got to feel like I was cool for a second. And... I extended a year there. So that's how my contract went from three years to six years and then a year in training. So seven years total. I joined in 2013, got out in 2020. Is that, is that normal? Um, that, that people could just be like, uh, Hey, I'm just signing up for one more year. I'm just signing up for two more years or that was a no. special circumstance. You reenlist. I believe the minimum is three years and it goes up from there that you can even reenlist for up to 10 years. I believe in the Navy, which is crazy to me. So yeah, not and people not, get married and can't even commit to 10 years. Yeah. But for some reason you had the option to just add one year plus one. Yes. Because they, they wanted to even my uh, rotation date with my EAOS end of active obligatory service, because it, I guess it made it easy on them for the paperwork and I was okay with it. So that's what they did. Wow. Crazy. And then, and then when you got out of the Navy, how many YouTube subscribers did you have? I think it was around, 400k something like that yeah there revenue, was uh, go ahead. i was gonna say as you know revenue is not based on subscribers by any means right 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 um subscribe uh but what subscribers is and you could probably tell me more so i used to have a, a, a instagram account with a blue check mark uh-huh and i could basically dm anyone and they would respond yeah recently i had that account um uh they got rid of it they sh they shut it down why and is that I, they, I have no idea. I mean, I could, I could guess. I could tell. I could guess. Tell you. 
I I probably know why. But but I don't but I don't but I don't know the real reason. I mean, every day I would publish a hundred things from uh, interviews of people to journal journal articles from the Lancet, just basically talking about like, hey, you better think twice before you get the injection. Yeah, that's def I, that's definitely one for sure. Yeah, I was pretty, but they weren't like, "Hey, you can't do this. Uh, we're gonna kick you off." Or I wasn't like, I don't think I said anything crazy. Well, you know, it just goes against their narrative. Right, right. Um, and and, and what's crazy is, is I hope uh, the whole time I hoped I was wrong. I hope they're right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be right on, on anything I'm saying. I want them to be right. Yeah. They're just not, um, but, uh, and so, but, but now no, but so I'm guessing that, it, so now no one will respond. Like you would have never responded to me. I, I'm just saying that I don't really know you. It, I don't mean to, but if I didn't know Hunter, you reaching, getting in touch with someone like you would be significantly harder. And, and I'm not blaming anyone for that. I would do that too. Anyone who DMs me with a check mark, I'd filter you to the top right away also. Mm -hmm. And, um, so when you have a million YouTube subscribers, it might not make you money, but it gives you, you earned, people know your voice is louder. You have one of the loudest voices in the sandbox. Well, yeah, it's a, I guess the subscribers is a, like a level of uh, either status or just, what's the word I'm looking for? More than status, it shows that. I mean, I mean, for, for any of us who are in the business, we like we know like, hey, it shows hard work, dedication, creativity. I mean, all those pieces. But then now to the uninitiated and, and I kind of want to bring talk about how the dumb shit that the uninitiated said, which is basically Harvard MBAs and Stanford MBAs, is that what it does is it gives you a louder voice to say things. So let's say someone let's say someone needed a heart transplant and they had a GoFundMe page. It would be better to have you talk about it than me talk about it. I, I touch 17,000 people and you touch a million people. Mm -hmm. Right. Or if someone uh, had a new pair of shoes they wanted to sell, they would theoretically come to you before they came to me. Technically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's so funny. We're thirty seven minutes in, minutes into the show, and I told myself no matter what, we're going to talk about Battle Bunker for the first twenty minutes because I really, really fucking am blown away at, at your commitment to this project. But you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll leverage that to trick you on to coming on again. Make a note of that, uh, Caleb. How to let, trick Austin to come on again? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to do, I'm I'm here. I'm here for it. Hunter says go. I, I'm like all right. I I hear people say um stuff like uh. So, so when I worked at Cross for 15 years, we weren't allowed to use the word marketing. And when I first started making videos, um, there was no YouTube, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when, when, if someone published one of your videos and like just a thousand people could see it, you'd be blown away as a filmmaker because you just wanted to make films and then let the world see them. Mm -hmm. So when YouTube came around and you, I could make a video of something and they would, and someone would publish it on YouTube or I'd publish it on YouTube and, um, 464 people would see you know my video it was it was huge it was crazy as an artist to be able to do that mm -hmm. the artist before us had to like rent out a gallery and invite 200 of their friends right yeah, and, and and pay for you know to promote it and, and whatnot and one night of just like and then it's gone whereas you when you sleep and i sleep our shit's still like working for us mm -hmm. that's why i love youtube because they've they've brought the power and taken some of the money away from massive networks who've been, you know, making billions of dollars for 50 plus years, 60, 70, 80 years. So thankful for Apple, Sony, YouTube, all yep. the innovations. Wow. Yep. Yep. And when I, I hear these, these, just these, these morons who are like, uh, um, uh, head of like Nike or head of uh, CrossFit or head of uh, you name, you name the fucking company and they, instead of pursuing excellence of their product, they're, they're pursuing metrics. So someone, the CEO of CrossFit, who's not in there now, but would said, Hey, I can't, our, our, when, when he would ask the team, what's your, vi uh, our vision is just to get to a hundred thousand affiliates. Right. And now there's, uh -huh. let's say 13 to 15,000. That's like a horrible fucking vision. That's not a vision. What, that that's um that's not chasing excellence. And so I used to make a movie for the movie to be good and then hope it would be seen. 
And when I see your content and you can tell me, shut the fuck up. I'm, I'm totally open to that. And, okay. um, but I don't think you said, Hey, I want to get to, I mean, I think you're excited that you made it to a million YouTube subscribers. But when I look at your content, I don't see someone who is chasing clickbait. I don't see someone who is focused on a million subscribers. I see someone who's focused on making content. Exactly. And I, like, I see other, and that YouTube was the byproduct. Yeah. It's, like I, I see so many YouTube creators that make content that is just kind of like dumb entertainment. And I never wanted it to be like that. I wanted all my stuff to be very informative. I want people to learn from it. I want them to be inspired and I want it to be good, produce high quality. You know, I could be out there like I put a million balls in my house to jump in like a ball pit. But what does that right. teach people? How do people learn from that? I mean, it's great for YouTube. You get five, six million views and make a couple, you know, 10, 20, 30 grand off of it. Right. But I don't want to be known as that guy. I want to be known as the guy who's a hard charger, who helps people get more fit and maintain a health, healthy lifestyle and just provides great enter entertainment. So, yeah, it's, I mean, YouTube is, I, I've, I've never really created for the clout or the fame. I just, always have loved video as you you know tell by my extensive camera collection yep yep and i love watching people watch my stuff because i can see their faces if it provides some sort of emotion for them whether laughing or crying or it's sentimental i get a great feeling from that and that's why i love youtube you want to add value exactly to their life and i know that sounds cliche like every content creator says that i mean value can be like through entertainment or whatever, but I'm not like, I don't watch enter entertainment. Like I play a little call of duty before bed to help me sleep, to cut my mind off. But if I'm doing something, it's to, to teach myself and to teach others. So yeah, I never wanted to be just entertainment. Opium, heroin. Is that entertainment? I, I mean, th that's what a lot of TV is, right? I mean, it, it's, um, it, like when you say you play a little call of duty, part of me is, is like, Hey, I wish I played a little call of duty, but, but for, for the reason that I could, so that I could relate to you of what call of duty is. I've never played call of duty. I've never seen it play, but I obviously I know what it is. It's in the, um, but like, yeah, I, I want to play just because I want to be able to have a conversation with people. I want to be able to know what our kids are doing. But, but for most people it's, 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 um, heroin. Like I've never shot heroin. I'd like to shoot heroin, but just, I've never robbed a bank. I'd like to rob a bank, but just for the experience, I just want the experience. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be a lifestyle component of me. I'd rather, um, me going to a, uh, jogging to a coffee shop with you be part of my lifestyle. Uh, -huh. yeah, Com completely Ruby yeah. habit. Like I, I can't sit there for five, six hours and just game. People are like, why don't you start a gaming channel? I'm like, no, I'm not about that. I'm not a regular gamer. If I can't sleep sometimes or if I'm thinking about something, a game helps me focus on only the game because throughout the day, you know, 16, 17, 18 hours a day, my mind is thinking about a thousand things and a game before bed really helps me with that. Did you ever see, see the show Mad Men? I didn't. I don't watch a lot of movies. It, it was it was this series. It was on A and E, and um, in, there was a guy on the on the show, and he was always drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes. Uh -huh. And whenever I would watch that show, I would want to do that. It was so weird. And um, even though I knew it was bad for me, uh, um, uh, fake tits are kind of like that. It's weird. They're, they're fake, and I know they're fake, but but I can't stop myself from like thinking that they're cool. Even th even though like. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like someone could just put socks under their shirt and all of a sudden I'll be aroused. I saw you put the socks under there. I see you smoking. I know it caught kills you, but I still want to do it. That's kind of like how I feel about content. I feel so responsible for what I put out. Mm -hmm. It's not that I want to be fake, but I don't want to show you on my Instagram uh, that I went out and got drunk. I'm not interested because I don't want you doing that. I, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same exact way. Like, like these Zins are never, I'm never like, hey, you know, you guys should try these. Never, I don't cuss on my channel. Um, don't. I wish show. I could do that. I wish I stopped cussing. I need to do that. Well, I don't think it's bad. I don't. I mean, I was in the military for seven years. Like every, you know, seventy-five percent of people's vocabulary is cuss is cussing. I don't have a problem with it at all. It's good but, discipline not to cuss. I like discipline. 
And I, I do custom videos, but we just cut it out. We just bleep it out, you know. But, um, yeah, in, in regular life, no, I, I cuss all the time. I really like that. What? Just you did that. Oh, uh, we cut it out. Oh. I, li- I like the, uh, the gesture, the, I, gest- I, the I gesticulating. Had the, I had the premiere timeline in my head, cut, cut, you know, so. That's a great word, gesticulate. Is that a word? Yeah, I think it means like like this is this does gesticulate, right? It rhymes. It, it just it's cool. I figured all the t- words that end with eight or tate, like prostate, masturbate, gesticulate, habit, habituate. Oh, they're all. I knew all. I knew Caleb was gonna pull it up. Use gestures, <laughs> especially dramatic ones, instead of speaking to emphasize. That was a very good definition. Dang, you're pretty smart. Uh, hey, you can tell this motherfucker's alpha, huh, Caleb? No one's ever read the shit before me on my own show. How fucking dare oh, oh, Austin? My bad. Let, let's redo that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking over. This is the Austin show now. Want to trade like, YouTube stations? Yeah, let's do it. Caleb, can you kick him out? <laughs> he can. Please don't. <laughs> oh, yeah, he just did it. Yep. Yeah. Uh... If, if I would have asked you, okay, let's go back to your YouTube station. So tell me about your f- first video and why you made a um, YouTube station. What, what was okay. the? So when I was in Bahrain, I was in a lot of debt because I was. Another know, great video. Another, you guys have to see this other video. There's a video about him and his, now is she your wife now? Girlfriend. Beyonce? Girlfriend, you're now girlfriend. It's all the same to me, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you're now girlfriend. Um, you went out on a date, and, and and it was a it was a travel date. You guys went somewhere, and basically, um, you should you guys should see this video. And he didn't want to tell her that he was in debt, so he took out even more debt on credit cards and went on this date. And it's a fucking really cool video that everyone should see. You should learn from his mistakes and not being in debt is stressful as fuck. But another fun. great video on Austin uh, Alexander's YouTube station. Um. Not yeah, those, good. but good find. It's it's not one of those. There's so I much think, practical shit on your station. Sorry, go on. Thanks. Um, you did a lot of research. I'm I'm uh, actually impressed. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. why I was. That's why I had to fucking stab you on Sunday. The doll. Yeah, my bad, my bad. I still have marks from that. By the way, see my neck. <laughs> I I told hunters like I'm so sorry. I'm like, dude, I I like it. I feel like you guys owe me something now. I've leveraged you. Yeah, he texted me. He's like, dude, what are you doing? I put you on all these important podcasts and you're not showing up. I was like, dude. <laughs> you should have said one million, player. One million. <laughs> I don't you're have to dick. show up anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. So, uh, debt. Y- YouTube, Bob yep. Rain. I was in a lot of debt. And I said, what better way to curve my depression than just to buy a, c- a camera? Bought a GoPro Hero 4 Silver. And I started making little videos, never posted them on YouTube, would post them on Facebook and send them to my friends. I'm like, this is what I did this weekend. This is great. Went to the Bahrain Mall, went to the market, went to, you know, Jarada Island, Dubai, whatever. And Why not use just your iPhone? Why spend more money? I've never used, I've never liked to use iPhone. I'm in debt from sending Super Chat. That's good. Make it $20 next time, uh, Wad Zombie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I just never liked filming with my, iPhone, you know, has small sensor, even though they're like, oh, we shoot 6K. When you blow it up, it's not really 6K. I mean, it's anyways. So plus we were doing a lot of wet stuff, if you catch my drift. So yeah. I, bought a, I bought a GoPro. And about two months later, I was like, this is great. I made like five or six videos. So I upgraded. I, I, that's and when what I bought. were you editing on at the time? Premiere. Okay. Yep. I, I had a pirated version of Premiere because I couldn't afford the, the other one. But that's when a, I got a on hold. a Mac laptop on your own yeah. personal computer. Okay. Mac laptop. Yeah. I had stole it, stole it, or I had taken it from my girlfriend at the time because she wasn't using it. And I was just editing. I was having to, you know, it would take me 10 hours for an edit because the computer was kind of shitty and slow and plus Premiere. But I bought a, a Canon 700D, a Europe version of the T5i. And that's when I really started getting into cinematography, like teach myself frame rates and everything like that. Normally, I'd just turn the camera on press record, but I was getting real detailed with it. I bought a a 50 millimeter, a nifty 50, and I started making these videos kind of more cinematic. And when I left Bahrain and went to a ship, 
I made a video called Day in the Life of Navy Sailor. And everybody was like, this is so good. You should put this on YouTube. And I was thinking, oh, I'm not good enough for YouTube. I'm not, you know, I'm what, not. What year is this? 2017. And I said, I don't want to put it on YouTube. I'm fearful of the judgment I might get. And finally, I just made myself post it to YouTube. Started an account, post to YouTube, left. Didn't really sign in again for another year. Mm. And then when we were in Fallon, Nevada with a VFA2, yep, that's it right there. That's it right there. That was filmed with... Uh, Look at your slow-mo. It's terrible. Yeah. You have some balls fucking shooting directly into the sun like that already, know, right? fucking rebel. Well, I'd, I'd change the, uh, you know, shutter speed and exposure, and everything, and made it look like that. Good job. There's me walking out on the the deck of the ship. Look at that shirt and pants, 1952. Well, those were coveralls. It's a it's a one piece. They made us wear a belt for our our, uh, I guess, because you have to have it tight in case anything was to fall down there. So I don't know. <laughs> This is a cool part. This is when a jet flies over me. That's a, I believe that's a Super Hornet. I'm not sure. And I did a little pause right here because I thought I was cool right in front of the sunlight. Hey, what? was that just fucking happen chance? Yes. Well, like every six minutes it would happen. They would come in and land and it was all day thing. Sometimes even during the night, you would always hear Shh, and the whole aircraft carrier would shake and rattle when they came in. So it was kind of tough to get some sleep some nights on that. That was shot with a 50 millimeter. I thought it was cool. I was like, man, this looks cool. This is so cinematic. That was yeah, dude, get, you, I, I feel, I'm feeling you. That was me getting dressed. In Who's the, holding the camera? It was a tripod. That was like 5 a.m. I was getting ready for work. I said, let me capture some clips. And, and, and um, when you're doing this, what, are, or, or, what should you be doing? It's your, is it your downtime? Yeah, we work for eight hours a day. Anything out, outside of the eight hours, we were stuck on the aircraft carrier, deployed. So it was downtime. And then you just stored you stored your uh, camera and your tripod in there. Yep, we had uh, racks that would pull up, and I just I just stored my camera and my my tripods in there. This is fucking crazy, dude. Thank you. This I can't believe every sailor's not doing this. I guess it's hard work. Well, a lot of sailors they just don't care. I knew I wanted to capture. This was captured on an iPhone. I knew I wanted to capture this and show my kids someday or show whoever. Yeah, this is cool. That was the gym. This was how packed it was. It was a tiny, like, 500-square-foot gym. The food, I loved the food on deployment. It was, it was pretty good. Lobster tails. There's me showing a little bit about the food. We got meatballs, squashed potatoes. Those are from, like, Singapore or somewhere. I would eat like a horse on there. Had four meals a day. So you went, you made this video, you sat on your fucking little bed in there and edited it all with your back hurting and yep. shit, worrying about your battery dying, accidentally forgetting to save shit. And just, yep. I know the nightmares of shit that you went through to make this. How'd you get that shot? Which one? Oh, the, oh that was, so I went to the media department in the, the ship. They had their own. Uh, personnel down there and i was like hey can i have some clips from deployment and they had a whole lot of them they had helicopter clips like those like that yeah i believe behind us that was probably like a japanese or um some type of other allied force ship and and and, and they just gave you the footage how did they give it to you on a thumb drive or you, yep. you gave hard drive so awesome <laughs> and i they gave me a bunch of music too. They're like, this is great. You can use it royalty free. When I posted it, YouTube copyright claimed all of it. And I was like, oh, well. But I created that video. I posted it and it was getting shared. You know, people were like, oh, this is what to expect during deployment. It was getting shared on Facebook pages, WhatsApp, all this stuff. And I didn't really pay attention. I didn't look at the comments, didn't look at the subscribers, nothing for like a year. And when I met Sarah, she's like, what do you do? You know, we met at a bar called the Eddy in Reno, Nevada. And she said, what do you do for a living? I said, like, oh, I'm in the Navy. She's like, oh, I love Navy, man. I'm like, well, do you? So I got her number. And did she live in Reno? She was travel nursing in Reno, yes. But she's originally from Ohio. And you were deployed. You were I was. Some, not yeah, deployed. You were. You were. Detachment. That's, that's what they call it. Okay. Yeah. It's when you go from your duty station to another place. So we were on 
uh, detachment in Fallon, Nevada from okay. Lemoore. Okay. And got her number three or four days later. I asked her out on a, a date and I went to her place and I said, actually, I have a video. I'll show you kind of like what I do. I showed her that video. She's like, this is an incredible video. You need to, why don't you post more on YouTube? And I was like, nah, don't, you know, I don't have the skill for it. I don't have the time for it, blah, blah, blah. So didn't post again for another three, four months. And throughout that time, Sarah and I became serious. And I said, well, I'm going to Seal Beach now. Why don't you come to California and move in with me and be my roommate? You can make more money there as a travel nurse and life will be great. So she did. She got her license in California and she moved in with me in Long Beach. And she's a very hard worker. She's Isn't like, Isn't that weird? You met someone like normal, like how people like my age meet people. Yeah. I, I had dated Navy women in the past. I never wanted to date another Navy woman. I just got out of a relationship where she cheated on me when I went on deployment. Happens all the time, sadly. But I said, and you didn't meet her on a, on a dating app either. You actually like saw her. You're like, I'll take that one. Yep. My, my friend was like, I want you to go talk to the prettiest girl in here. And I said, okay. So I looked around, I looked behind me and Sarah was already staring at me from afar. And she looked like she was going to like trying to kill me or something. That's how the eye contact was. And after two or three times glancing over and she was still just looking at me, I went over there and I was like, what are you looking at? That's how the, the conversation started. Obviously, I thought she looked good and she was pretty and whatnot. So I was, I was being flirtatious in there. Yeah, you didn't want to fight her. You weren't like, what, what, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah, I, I wasn't. No, I, okay. I kind of wanted to punch her because that'd be funny. Didn't. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I just love it how you picked the prettiest girl. Yeah, I, I mean, because there was no um, kind of like a no strings attached thing. I was pretty, I was pretty drunk. I was like eight beers in and. My confidence was through the roof, fresh out of a relationship. I was like, I'm free, baby. Let's do this. So, yep, went over there and, Sarah, can you come here for a second? She's still here. I'll, I'll introduce you. Oh, that's cool. I'll say hello. Are we live? Yep, Hi, we're Sarah. Live. Hello. What's up, girl? What's up? We're live right now. Golly, your yeah. backyard is, I mean, you're, what's behind you? That looks like a lot of junk. That's lenses. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if they can hear you, but. Oh, they can hear me. They can hear you. Oh, it's camera stuff. Cool. Oh, that's I don't even. Know. I haven't used this Sony in so long. I don't even. Oh, this is the. Oh, this is sixty six hundred. Oh, okay. That was. That's old. Woo! She knows her shit. Oh yeah, I got it. She's just guessing. No, I know it's old. <laughs> she don't know. The Anyways, this one is the seven XR. I was telling him about how we met. Oh. I said, oh, "What yeah. are you looking at?" And you were like, I'm looking at you. I was like, why? And you were like, you're the most handsome guy in this bar. I, I said, that. I know. And hey, you did. Okay, see you later. Go drink. Hey, bar. wait. Did you really say that? You're the most handsome guy in this bar? Fuck no. Oh. Did you yes. know he picked you because you were the prettiest girl in the bar? No. I, he picked me because I kept staring him down across the thing. It was all about that eye contact. Oh, so he was going for an easy approach. Okay, he yeah. told the story like he was that he fucking had a huge sack and he just fucking. Oh took no, 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 no! Like I was giving him hints all night. Like I was staring at him from. Oh, okay, the but like, I wouldn't have approached unless my buddy said, "Find the prettiest girl in this bar." Okay, and I was really looking at her uh, rear end because I was like, "Dang, she was wearing a sundress." I was like, "Dang, that's nice." I was wearing a romper. Get it right. Or Sarah, thing. do you squat below parallel? I, I have a bad back. I got herniated. Oh, head. shit. I have a bad back, too. That butt's going to go away if you don't squat below parallel. I know. I well, know, I know. Her, she has scoliosis, so she pokes her butt out. So it, you know, looks like. I really got a bad back. I got a herniated disc. It's okay. It sounds like your scoliosis is, is doing wonders for all of mankind. Yeah. Thank you. It is. Thank you. Okay. Love you. See you later. Anyways, that's Sarah. I like that. That's like at Chuck E. Cheese. You just put a quarter in and the uh, you hide. <laughs> that was nice. It's wow. Hard this is mirrored, so it's kind of hard to. Yeah, that was incredible. That's all I wanted to see was her butt, and you covered it up perfectly. Yeah. Well, I'll show you some photos later. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, uh, I, I should have put this on the show earlier. That's pretty cool. Savan Madison. 
Matosian. This Matosian. The, the bottle breacher guy made. Do you know who the bottle breacher guy is? I think I've heard of him. Yeah, a mill guy started selling bottle openers and fucking. Yeah. And, and now he's running for office. I think that's legit. Yeah. What is that tip made out of? I that's not lead, is it? No. I, well, God, I hope not. But this is what was a real whatever, whatever you guys use to shoot the bad guys with. Yeah, that's like a. I can't tell because the fish eye. That's that's bigger than fifty cal for sure. Yeah, that's massive. Caleb, that, do you know what it is? Does that go in a sea whiz? Oh, look, he's gonna go to the bottle breacher. With, oh, it is fifty cal. Oh yeah, I got that little box. Oh, hey, I gave that little nice. wooden box to my son, and this is probably I shouldn't share this, but he collects lizard tails in it. So he catches lizards in the backyard, and when their Hold tails it. fall off, he puts them in that box. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a 20 millimeter. I was about to say, either you have small hands or that's not a 50 cal. Yeah. I have small hands. 20 millimeter right there. Maybe one's a 50, one's a 20. They look the same to me. That's cool. Oh, no, one of them's got a ring on it. Mm. 20 mil. I've never used them to open a bottle, that's but they're cool. cool. Bottle, bre bottle breacher's getting free promotion. Look at that. I had to go buy me one. So, so, so then you were off to the races. You basically, you did, you made the one YouTube video 15 months later, you met your chicks pressuring you to make another video and you do it. Yeah. It was like a year later or something, or maybe like 11 months later. She, no, she was, I mean, like she's very outspoken and she says what's on her mind. And I was on night shift. I think I was sitting there like watching a video or something. And she was like, what the fuck are you doing? Get your ass in there and make a YouTube video. I'm tired of you just not doing anything. Go make a YouTube video. And I was like, but I don't know. She's like, I don't care. Just go film something. So I grabbed my iPad. It was the only thing charged at the time. And I literally, within the next 10 minutes, made a video on my channel. That's the one titled, Why You Should Join or Should You Join the Military? And I noticed How that. How many views does that one have, Caleb? Second video on the iPad. Should you join the military? Probably like seven or 8,000, something like that. And I just kept kept posting. I didn't know what to post about. I just would think about something. Should you join the military? What jo what job? How to increase your PRT, PRT scores? Um, you know, fitness, chest day, stuff like that. Kind of like how any, yeah, 15,000 views right there. So you just started posting what you know about. Exactly, yeah. And I love the feedback that I got from the community. People were like, hey, I'm in the Army, but I love this video. It's great. I'm in the Navy. I'm in the Air Force. I'm in, I was stationed with Bahrain. It was like a sm really small community. And I really related to everybody and people related to me and it was great. Yeah, that's, um, I like the comments too. I never, uh, when people talk about like, oh, these kids feel bad because they didn't get likes or they didn't get this. I'm like, dude, try being shadow banned. Like, first of all, I never get likes. I never get views. But sometimes I'll get, like, on my Instagram account, you know, I had 100,000 followers. And if I got 20 comments, I was, like, so stimulated by it. Yeah. I like I like the comments. I like the interaction. Mm -hmm. I like saying, making your mama jokes. If anyone says anything mean to me, I'd fucking rip their mom. Yep. And you go to their profile, you look at their photos and roast their photos. Yo, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Done yes. that multiple times. Yes. I'm sorry. Are you upset at me? Did you did you lose your mask? I like I like a lot of mask <laughs> mask jokes. Yeah, yeah. Those really hit people in the feels. Yes, yes. Uh okay, and, and then you were off to the races. It, um, did you when did it become a habit or a, an addiction or a, a, a I'm when making I, a presupposition, but but people like me and you, we I, I don't know if goals is the right word, but I like I have to do a podcast every day. It's what I do. Mm -hmm. and it has to be good and it has to be researched and, and I have to work out every day and I have to spend time with my kids. Like there's these check marks I just have to do. Yeah. So it somehow slipped into that category for you, right? Yep. It was, so I was still working at the Navy, of course. And every three months I would rotate days, nights, but I made it happen. I would have a whole list of topics that I wanted to cover and I would just get it done. Oh, so like you'll be at work now doing something and you'll be like, Oh shit, I need to make a video on why it's important to, uh, or how to change the tire on this Jeep for this, this exactly. particular Navy vehicle, because it's so different. And I had to do it once. It took me an hour to find the tire iron. No one's going to know where it is. And you write that down and then you get off work and make the video. Exactly. And yeah. you had a I, list of shit. Yep. A whole list. How of not to chafe your ball sack 
with your yep. new fatigues, how, what to wash them with. God, fucking, exactly. I love it. God, how to you're run, good. like how to run in boots, like how to yeah. increase your course for physical readiness test, all yes. this stuff. And sometimes I would get off. There's a video on, on there is how to increase your scores. It's the thumbnail. Caleb is me doing a sit up. After I got off work on night shift, working, you know, an eight hour day, rolled into, which isn't super bad, rolled into going to the field that morning at like eight or nine and filming that whole video before I went, went home, went home, slept, woke up for two hours, edited a little bit, edited a little bit of work, and then just made it happen. And I just become so laser focused on getting these videos out. Uh, let's see. So, yep. That's it right there. Yep, There's me. I would just kind of film random, random stuff. Here's me taking off my du duty gear. Here's what I wear. Okay, today, guys, I'm going to tell you about the PRT, blah, blah, blah. Talking a little bit. I had a little intro. I uh, had a series called Fitness Friday as well. Did you feel yourself develop, too, um, as, as an uh, actor? I don't mean, like, did you feel yourself refine your, your skill? Of with, for sure, yeah. I mean, presentation, with what you wanted to say, not swearing, taking out ums, uh, how to gesticulate, how to, you, but, but th things that added value, not, not so much to be fake. Yes. Not to sell yourself, but just to be um, a, a cleaner presentation. Well, as far as like making video better, negating wind, stuff like that, I wanted the videos to be good. I didn't really care about how I looked or how I sounded. I had a really bad Alabama accent. I would still say ums. I would, you know, all of that. That didn't really come until the video started getting, yeah, sorry for the win right there. Perfect. Man, Caleb's good. You need to get him a raise. Dude, look how he's posed there. I Please tell me you picked that because he looks like a centerfold model there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's his grinder pick. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's when I was preparing <laughs> for the show, so I was like super lean. You, you are lean there. Yeah, lean and tiny. But, okay. Uh, so, sorry. So go ahead. So so you were refining, but but yep. but more like but more technical stuff. Technical, yeah. Not really presentation wise as far as myself. Other than what the Navy required me to do, keep a clean haircut, keep keep a clean shave. I would still say ums, and the accent was really bad. I didn't really start focusing on that until I started doing other gigs. Like I was um I was an extra in the movie Tenet, horrible movie. I don't know why they made it like that, but I started doing Is that a Leonardo movie. DiCaprio movie? No, it's a John Paul Washington, I believe Den Denzel Washington's son, and Robert Pattinson starred in it, directed by, who's the guy who did Insidious? I know, I've uh, definitely heard, is it a horror movie? It's, uh, it's a really trippy movie. It's kind of similar to Shutter Island. Well, how, director. How, how did you how did you get an extra in that they sent me a casting call they said calling military members you want to be uh it, no it's not maybe i'm thinking of not insidious but let me just look up who directed tenant somebody sent me a casting call they were looking for Mil christopher nolan that's it oh oh the bat he does the batman movies right or he did a batman movie that was I really good so. like so. a pretty he's, dark one he's like one of the highest paid directors Crazy. They they spent six hundred and sixty million dollars on that on that movie. Original I, budget I, was two hundred that, million. That's not the movie where Leonardo wrestles the bear or something. No, that's um. Fuck, what's that name? Great movie. Revenant. Revenant. Hey, hey, Revenant. Caleb, is something on your Revenant. microphone? No, I don't know what's wrong with it. Mm. Yeah, it was the Revenant. Yeah. Um, no, Tenet is where they go through like half the movie. They it shows the movie, and then it start starts going in reverse. You start to see the scenes play back in reverse. We had to run backwards and everything. It was intense. We were out there for three oh, weeks. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. I remember that. The casting call was like <clears throat> need military members who know how to handle weapons and can run backwards. We we're like, what the heck? So we pull up to Universal Studios. There was like a hundred of us, and they walked out with I think fifty that were selected and we got, we went to go get fitted and we we're out in the desert in the Palm Springs area for three weeks and getting paid really good money compared to, you know, at the time I wasn't really earning a whole lot from, from YouTube and they paid us. It was really good money. It was like 
five grand a week. Wow, that is good money. Yeah. And and, and while you're at, how did you get the time off from work from being a, a soldier? I, I took leave, sailor. Wow, sailor. Yeah, Sorry. I, no, you're good. I took leave, and my command was like. Sorry, I mean, you can have two weeks, but we need you for this mandatory on your leave time. We need you for this mandatory. So I had to drive four and a half hours back to Seal Beach that, for that day. And that night, I drove back because the pay was so good, and, and I was you know, going to be in this big production Hollywood movie. Are you actually in the movie? Did you make it? There's the window scene when you, sh when you see um, Mr. Washington, the, the main actor. I think his name's John. When you see uh, Denzel's son, Oh, I remember when that movie came out. Holy shit! Now I remember because it was it was at the peak of like um uh was, was that 2020 2021 the summer 2019 it was, at, it was yeah it was at the peak of some fu I, fuck I remember it God I remember it I remember thinking they were trying so hard that, that, that it makes me feel so much better that this is Denzel Washington's son because I'm like it seems so forced that all of a sudden that this guy was fucking in a massive fucking movie yeah and that they spent all this money on it and that they didn't pick a guy who is more well known okay and he did a good job it was a weird movie he's really he's a great actor I met him yeah. I spoke to him a few times spoke to Robert Pattinson I mean he was getting blueberries out of the the snack trailer he's like what's up y'all we're like, what's up? There's like 10 of us talking to him. Yeah. The funny thing is, is Christopher Nolan, he had a coffee person and a water person like by his left and right at all sides. He would be like coffee and they would put it in his hand. He would take two sips, be like water. You know, I mean, he's, he's super rich, super famous. Yeah. A lot of his, his uh, movies are either like really, really hit or like really, really miss. And Tenet was a really was a miss a, a lot of people have this um confused i i, I filmed these um the i filmed these mo this movie called um desert runners where i spent at least two weeks in the four harshest climates on the planet so basically i went to these deserts in china i went to china the gobi in china antarctica you did Sahara, that that's crazy and uh what's the one in chile the, the, the driest where it has never rained there in the entire history of the planet. I went to, anyway, I went to those deserts and these people ran across and I went there and, be, uh, and I, and I filmed out there and what I would do every, every morning or fucking several times a day is I would take a big old, huge, I guess it's the one liter of water and I would put a Starbucks coffee in there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those powder ones and I'd shake it and I would drink it. And people would say to me, Hey dude, you need to hydrate. You need to drink water. All you do is drink coffee all, all day. I'm like, fuck nut. That's when I knew I was living on a planet with a bunch of fucking retards. I'm like, this is water. They're like, well, it's coffee. I'm like, I know, I know, but co like, it's still water. Coffee is water. Everything is everything is fucking water. Yeah, it's not like your body says, oh, this is coffee. We just <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I bet water. you, I don't mean to rip Christopher Nolan when he's not here to defend himself, but I bet you that's what that fucking idiot thought. Love the guy, maybe. but I bet you he thought maybe that so. he had to hydrate because coffee dehydrates you. Yeah. I mean, probably he's, I mean, he's a director. He's not a health, you know, guy. So he probably has, I don't know. Doctors you only need one. You just, unless he really wanted really strong coffee for the taste and maybe he's a taste aficionado and he didn't want, cause like, that's what I do. This is just one shot of espresso diluted with uh, the rest hot water. I mean, this oh. thing tastes, I mean, it's like I'm, I'm drinking water. Yeah, you made me feel like an addict. I had a two and a half shot of espresso this morning. I drank it every morning walking to the park. I'm at that point in my life where like I'm trying to like cut back on things. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're you're just, you're you're fucking a space shuttle who's like you're circling the Earth and shit. You're you're I'm Speaking fucking of. I'm in a museum already. <laughs> I'm in the Smithsonian. I say you got a good 40, 50 years left. Thank you. I don't think you. you're. Thank you. you. Know, Everything in the Smithsonian time. still has time before it really falls apart. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Speaking of space, space shuttle. Yes. yes. And, um. Another video that I want to do soon is going to space with this company called Worldview. That's that's my one of my ultimate goals. And when and you mean space, how high is that? It's just to orbit. It's just right above the Earth where you can see the black meeting the Earth. Is and that like 90 miles like that way? I think it's a little more than 90 miles, but maybe. How far am I quicker than uh, Caleb? 
Oh, 62 miles. I guess you can get there in, in uh, yeah, 62 miles. 62 oh. miles. There it is. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's right to orbit because it's a hot air balloon. It's this big ass hot air balloon and it's carrying. Wow. If you look at Worldview, they do them all the time. It's similar to Blue Origin and SpaceX, except and uh, Virgin Galactic, but they actual they take actual like propelled ships, like airships, up there. Worldview has um, a globe that eight people can be in, and it just takes you right up. They decrease the helium, and then you go down. Wow. Hey, what do you think about all the UFO stuff? I think there are UFOs out there. I have a weird story that's still unexplained, but even speaking to some of my friends that are pilots and, and people that handle the planes, they've seen some really weird stuff that cannot be explained either through, you know, a lot of people say, oh, that was a jet or that was a, a plane. Planes don't move like that. And, and and when you say so, UFO stands for unidentified flying object. Mm -hmm. That you think that um, it's a. Uh, do you think it's something that, that there are not humans in? I do. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if you think the the human brain is not programmed to think about infinity, when you think about infinite, it's hard to think about. Even grains of sand on the Earth are not infinite. There's a number out there. Space infinite. It doesn't stop. So I think it's also hard for us to process that there are other beings out there. And I think there are. Um, infinite is, uh, it, I would, it's um, like trying to think of the unknown. You can't, um, you can't really think of the unknown. Yeah, exactly. You, you, we can't wrap our minds around it. There was this lady I had on the show. Uh, she was an a, a OGBYN courtney hunt and she has redirected her focus and attention to um quantum physics and quantum computing just really really small how the uh, things on a really small level right mm -hmm. that that's how she defined quantum for me everything that's like really small and, and you know the physics at, at the quantum level are different than the physics that you and i deal with every single day is like pee into a toilet and shit yeah um and one of the things that we were talking about in the show was I forget how much of the light spectrum she said we see, but it was fucking tiny. It was a fraction. I want to say it was less than 3% or less than 1%. And I was like, so that means there's 97, there could be shit. If we're not seeing 97% of the light, there could be light bouncing off of shit that's alive. That's all around us that we don't see. She said precisely. And at that point, it's just like, Oh shit. Our, our tools are fucking weak too. You know what I mean? Yep. Our tools of perception are just fucking. I mean, like they're like, for example, come here, Lucy. Don't show me an alien. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. This is the next. This is basically an alien. Okay. This right. is Lucy. Like, I mean, not a human on, on earth. We have hundreds of thousands of species that are not human, you know, right. Just because they live on earth. We're somewhat familiar with them and we can understand that. Hey, that's not a human. Anything from another planet, whether animal or a, a brain thinking apparatus, whatever, that's considered an alien because we're not familiar with it. Right. I mean, people find different species in the ocean all the time. I think they found two new species like last month. Yeah. Or, or people who come over the border uh, are, are aliens. Lucy came from the border. She's from Mexico. Uh, I'm pretty sure um, that I'm seeing your T T count drop in real time. The the longer you hold that dog. Oh really? <laughs> I, I think uh, my confidence is skyrocketing. My T level is going up. Skyrocketing, right? Right. Yeah. No, this is a uh, this is Lou. She's a multi poo. She's a motion sport animal. Are okay. you okay that she sleeps between you and your girlfriend in the bed? Yeah, I'm okay. Because when I want her to move, I just pick her up and lift her up and just scoot her over, Sh shove her down. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, Lucy's an alien, basically. We have a we have a Chihuahua that bites. That's not and good. so and so. If I want a piece of ass, I have to like take a bite. I have to I have to take yeah. like I have to it's like earn it. it. I have to get bit. It's worth it. It is worth it. I it's totally worth it, but it's crazy. That's hilarious. It's, it's fucking nuts. I wish I was joking, but it's like, oh, I got bit. I guess I'm getting laid tonight. Yeah, I mean that's an even trade off. Right. 
And, and the good thing is, is like about a year ago, um, my wife pulled out a bunch of teeth, uh, had a bunch of teeth of the dog's mouth pulled out. Mm -hmm. So now it, it doesn't hurt as bad. So how Chihuahuas does they, are shitty dogs. Don't ever yeah, get one. That's a that's a tough bite. They 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 bite hard. I got bit on the ankle with, by one when I was little. And they let go. They're pussies too. They just bite and then let go. They're not like they're they're not in for the kill. They just want to hurt you. Yeah. Yep. Battle. Uh, yes. No. Go ahead. A, a ba battle. Ba do you have to go? No. Any. I'm good. I, can, I can have you for nine minutes and fifty three more seconds. Yep. Of course. All right. Let's do it. Um, all this whole YouTube thing, let's skip to like the present. It's, it's like gone through these evolution. It, it first was something to help you get your mind off of your exorbitant debt. So you wouldn't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Use it as a tool, as a tool of, for therapy. Mm -hmm. Then it, um, uh, it, it used to, um, uh, attract a vagina that worked. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you then were able to f find a muse. And I love the story. It runs parallel to mine. You understood that the universe was talking to you through this super hot chick and uh, giving you orders of what to do. And you're like, yes, I will create content. Yeah. And now um, you're doing something called Battle Bunker. And it sounds, uh, it sounds scary to spend your life savings to build something. It's like the Field of Dream story. You're building something in Chula Vista, California. Or is it built? It's built. It's built, but with no, you have no guarantee. You have no like, okay, guys. No guarantee. Yeah, there's no no sponsor, no brand out there that's like, okay, we'll support you. So can you tell me the story of, of, of sort of how, why you built this thing and, and where what the, the kind of the end goal is for it or, or it's, its life expectancy, what it's going to do, its life goals? Yeah, life expect expectancy two months. So, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, what, what, you're seeing now, what you're seeing now is the original battle bunker the best performing channels or videos on my channel were were obstacle course challenge where i took celebrities athletes occupations and would put them through these military style obstacle courses and fitness competitions in 2020 when i was getting out i said i really want to develop the series i had you know 30 40k in the bank i said let's make it happen found a plot of land leased it for three grand a month and i built this nine obstacle course out in moore park california in the desert so you paid off your debt by the time you got out and saved a little cash yes yes Congratulations. I was like, thank you i was like 20k in debt um throughout the time i became obsessed with ways to pay off that debt e-commerce amazon fba stock option trading shorting you know i knew all about the stock market and still do and Did you make thing, any money in the gamestop thing for sure yeah gamestop Ooh. amc in there too I wrote Boss, it, good I wrote, job, dude. Thank you. I wrote it on the back end. So when I saw it shoot up, I said, well, it's got to come down. So I put, I bought some put options for, I think, two months out. They went up like 1,200%. I was like, okay. I was like, I expected it. So, yeah, it was good. The most money I've ever made it was uh, on Do Dogecoin. I had oh, alerts set yeah. up. Uh -huh. I had been buying Doge for years before the massive spike in 2020. Uh huh. When I saw a little bit of activity on Dogecoin that it had, was like at like a one year high, I told my cousin, I said, "Hey, put a thousand dollars in Dogecoin." And then seven months later, he paid off his twenty thousand dollar car from Dogecoin. Wow. Yep. I think wow. I thought I made about twenty or thirty k on it as well. It was a good play. Really good play. Wow. How fun. Super fun. It was a rush, dude. I wasn't sleeping. I was watching the charts. I was like, man, I'm getting rich. This is great. But I had. Dude I had done, you know, things here and there to help myself pay off that debt. Do you know the Instagram account? This guy, I'm try trying to get him on the show. He keeps telling me um, he's not the right guest for me, but I know he is. He follows, he's built all these algorithms and tracking software to follow how all the people in Congress and Senate invest. Have you seen this account? I haven't seen it. It's got like 100,000 followers. I think it starts with a Q or something. It's crazy, dude. What's going on? No, no, not that Q. What, what? quiver quiver you know what we should all follow the con congressional dude this matter. guy's instagram account is nuts i'm surprised they're gonna shut him down uh, there's it's only a matter of time it is so good he is so good and he basically just he'll be like hey today nancy pelosi invests in this i have no idea what she's doing but i do know that she's also on the board for trash picking up and she's 
invested in a trash picking up company and uh let's see how this plays out y'all it's so good yeah. dude it's this yeah, account is so good Deliver quantitives yeah okay it's crazy how they're allowed to invest it is crazy it is nuts when you start following this guy it's nuts Hey, I just saw an article uh, yesterday that scientists are starting to uh, meet and rethink that maybe the um, the vaccine has done more harm than good. Scientists. I, I heard that. Sci it's in Science Magazine, and they're saying, I'm like, scientists. Show me a scientist. Let me tell you if he's a scientist or she's a scientist or not. Fucking scientist. Okay. Uh, battle Bunker. Okay. So, so, so you, you, you like the obstacle course making those videos. You got a lot of yep. feed, good feedback on them. And yep. You were into yep. it and you're super fit and you like, you like exercising like a madman. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so I said, let's build a freaking obstacle course out in the middle of the desert. Hopefully people will come. I kept telling myself if you build it, they will battle. So there I am spending my life savings again on an obstacle course, spent like 30, 40 grand on it and started producing the episodes throughout 2020 and 2021. We produced 21 episodes got pretty good reach we landed a show with snapchat and we kind of monetize on snapchat the same way we do on youtube so it was it was pretty good sponsors were wanting to sponsor the videos and i was like okay this is great so uh in march i was like you know i really want people to be able to come out to this thing and right now they can't because we're limited to like 10 people there's no power there's no water people getting dehydrated people can get sun and if they fall what out, city was it in at that time moore park california okay. Up in the outskirts of Moore Park. Like and who owned the land that you built it on? This guy named Glenn. He owned Ambush Paintball Park. And okay. I said, hey, do you have any land that I could rent? And he said, yeah, I have 86 acres. You can have for three grand a month. I said, wow, how fast can you draft a lease? I signed it. And, and what Sarah, what's Sarah say about this? Like kind of your muse. She cool? Keep push, push, boy, push. She's cool. Yeah. She's, she trusts me that I'm making the right decision. And it's, you know, she's completely changed her whole life. We moved from Long Beach to Anaheim to Simi Valley, California, out in the middle of nowhere to now San Diego, Chula Vista. She loves it here, but, um, you know, she's having to pick up her life and move wherever I go. So I'm just glad she's here with me. Well, you brought her to the, the Holy Land, San Diego. It's hard. San Diego is fucking good. I love San Diego. Great community, great people, great gyms around here. Yep. In March, I said, I need to cut the lease to the Battle Bunker land because I didn't want to keep paying for it. It's expensive for a piece of kind of like shitty land that didn't have power or water. So I said, What's what the about the content you were making out there? It was good. It was, we, we weren't shooting a whole lot because during the summer, we get like 110 and people would be like, I don't want to come out there. So it was getting tough. The video crew, you know, was getting tired. And so I said, we got to move this. I can either A, buy a million dollar piece of land in Texas and build on it. And hopefully this all works or I can be, I can partner with a facility that already has the facilities and uh, the, the know-how behind events and everything. And I had been to the Chula Vista elite athlete training center before. I was like, man, that place is beautiful. There's not a lot of people there a lot. So I'm going to pitch this idea to them. Went down there. I said, can I build an obstacle course in lot D three acres and after two months of negotiations, me developing business plans, contracts, um, showing like all of our financials to them, they said, sure, we'll uh, go into this deal for two years and you can have your events here. You can build your course here. So I shelled out hundred thousand dollars and we, so yeah, this is an old, this is, and we haven't made any new videos on the new course yet. It's brand new. They just finished it at the end of August. So like two weeks what? ago, they finished. Uh, um, Tell me the name of the facility, Chula Vista what? Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center. It's an Olympic training center. So how did that place pop up on your radar? How did you know that – what? how did they pop up on your radar? I had done a video there with a good friend of mine. She's a YouTuber, Michelle Carre. And when I went there with her, I was like, man, this place is beautiful. Like they have 160 acres. They have $40 million facility. This place is crazy. And – I didn't know the setup. I didn't know who they were owned by, nothing. But when I reached back out, I got some more information on that. And they're like, we're owned by the city, but Elite Athlete Services, oh. you know. So they, they do partnerships. In the last two years, they've opened up to the partnerships and sponsors, which is where we come in. And we kind of attached ourselves to them, built $100,000 course out there. And yeah, basically like when I, I had some savings, 30 grand, <laughs> Spent on a course. It was great for a year and a half. Now 
saved up another hundred grand, spent on a course. So I'm just hoping this all pans out. I'd set my goal to when I first built the first battle bunker, I said, I want to have physical competition. And this year's the year. On October 29th, we're having our first competition at the at the Elite Athlete Training Center. What's the uh, URL for that uh, for people to sign up for that October 29th event? If you go, if you can uh, show the website, Caleb, look at me. I'm I'm in, uh, instructing your awesome, awesome, here. awesome battle uh, bunker. Thebattlebunker.com. You see the big tab that says flagship competition. If you click that, you'll see a beautiful, um, familiar face up there. The first picture. Oh, yep. there he is, man child. Yeah, right there. There he is, Hunter. You click sign up, it'll bring you to a Google form and fill in your information, either as a spectator, volunteer, com uh, competitor, or sponsor. And we're giving away some pretty sweet cash prizes. And uh, yeah, that's. Oh, asshole. Yeah. Asshole. Yeah. Sign, sign asshole. him up. Sign him up. Asshole. Sign him up as a sponsor. Hey, hey, I don't have a gender. I have a sex. I have a huge swaying cock yeah. that makes me a man. I do not have a gender. I do not even know what that word means. I'm still searching. It's, it's like infinity to me. I have infinite. Can you change that for me, Austin? I get triggered by that word gender. Could you change it to sex? Uh, I'm sorry. I can't do that. Oh. Everybody has to have a gender, we, and we have to know it. I, I, I can't. I'm fucked. I don't know it. Yep. Go ahead and click submit. Yep. And I'll, I'll get on the form. We have 340 people that have signed up so far. 200. Uh, 200. Oh, what? What about my? What about my disabled cousin? He only has one arm, and um, and he has anorexia, and uh, he doesn't want to race against. He's Mexican. He doesn't want to race against uh, white guys because it triggers him. Do you have a special class for him? So far, we only have male and female classes. He's more than welcome to to join the the male um, individual. <laughs> this this event feels very exclusive. Not really. Why? It's open to literally everybody. Males All right, and females. Fine. Fine. Okay. Fine. fine. <laughs> uh can i um let's can i sleep there is there a place for me to um uh, bring my camper there yep there's um barracks and there's uh so you pay 175 bucks to compete you get a night stay and you get three meals and you get to compete that's the cheapest competition everywhere in any anywhere in history and um is is this the first of an annual event what's the i'm hoping to make it an annual i think next year we will do somewhat of an open that's open to like a lot more people that can compete because this time we're doing 80 athletes next time i want to make like an open competition, people who score the highest will be able to advance and go to the second competition, which would be um, people that have qualified. Uh, Caleb, I just noticed an inconsistency in some of the numbers. Do you know what I'm referencing, Caleb? Uh, he said that only 80 people could compete. That would be 160 total between men and women. And yet he said 340 people have signed up. And I'm 40 struggling. 40. 80 total. 80 total. But yep. he said... But he said, but more than that have signed up. Mm -hmm. So now I'm confused. So we sent out the invites September 30th. Just because they sign up the form does not mean they will compete. It will be oh. an election. Here are some shots of the training center. How do you, how are you going to pick? How do you pick? How did you pick who? Um... I'm leaving up to Hunter. So he has to go through all the people? Well, we both will, I'm sure, but he will have the final say there there's gonna be some service members in there some of my of my friends are competing some people that i don't know will be competing so wow so the event is already more popular than you can handle i like to think so yeah just because people have signed up and and done the easy work on the forum does not mean they will actual you know as you know they're actually going to travel out and, and where will will you be streaming this live the event this will be live stream a lot of money and resources are going into a live stream because we're live streaming the same day as the rogue invitational oh and i want ours to be more entertaining than rogue invitational i mean rogue invitational is great if you're only into athleticism but if you like a little humor in there some you know less professional like they're we're gonna have people coming on telling stories uh broadcasting we could have a live host for the sports we have some cool cams in there with some great zooms and will it be on your youtube station it will be on the Battle Bunker YouTube channel. Battle Bunker. And, is, and why not? What well, the Battle Bunker has a hundred thousand subscribers and you have a million. Why not put it? Oh, you know, why not stream it to both? It's kind of like um like if you look at if you look at Joe De, De Sena or Desana, he doesn't put 
live Spartan events on his channels. They're on the Spartan channel. So I want to build this as a separate brand. I don't want myself to be involved in literally everything the Battle Bunker does. It's meant to be propelled on its own in the future. So I want to get used to that. I want to start broadcasting on its own channels. We've been putting a lot of resources into creating short form content. We have this other series called the Battle Bus. It's gotten over 600 million views in six months. And yep, there it is right there. Dude, the Battle Bus thing is crazy. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. I've, I've you pay for that? You do. Yeah. I never see you be like. And, and today, uh, Fix a Flat gave us a thousand dollars. It's all yep. that's your money. Unsponsored, my money. You're nuts. Yep, that's and what it takes. I mean, we do earn some. Okay, so I'll I'll say this here. I've never said this anywhere else. Short form content is obviously become more popular. TikTok started it. I'm glad for that. And then Facebook Reels and Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts and Snapchat Discover are following up. So the first person to really pay out for short form content is Facebook. They pay out early this year. They were given $1,400 for every million views in January. We did 50 million views on our Facebook page. So 1400 times 50, even though the max you can earn is 32,000. We, we capped that. We made $32,000 from the battle bus. You mean per, per video? No, no, no. Total. So the most you can make in it uh, on the YouTube on on the Facebook is thirty two thousand. Thirty thousand in a month. Oh, every month. Oh. So we post these videos, and I'll show you the reach right here. They we get anywhere between twenty to fifty million views per month. Now there it is. Uh, this last twenty last uh, twenty eight days, twenty three point seven million. And those are the videos where you you're like hanging out in a parking lot, and you're like. Hey, sweetheart, come over here. You want five bucks? Let me see one pull up. Yeah, you want I 10 bucks? See, Let me see two pull ups. I don't say sweet. I don't say sweetheart because it's, I don't want to get canceled, you know? Right. I understood. But, um, like you say, hey, dude, uh, can you do pull ups? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll give you five dollars every pull up. Try it out. A lot of people say no. A lot of people say yes. We film it. We let them know, hey, this is being filmed. Is that cool? Yeah. They come out and we give them real cash. The, my favorite is the lady who you, you said, she said she couldn't even do one push up and you still got her to come out there and do it. Mm -hmm. And, and, she and did you, six. Yeah. And, and even though her range of motion was fucking hideous, I just, I just the whole time, like, dude, he, maybe he changed this girl's life. That's the way I like to think about it too. And the people that watch the videos, she's 600 times more powerful than she thought she was. Oh. Mm -hmm. And when you have the cameras on and, and when, you're competing, metric. when you're, when people have the cameras on them, when they're competing for cash prizes, the stakes are real. So they really achieve what they can achieve. People really max it out. And I'm I'm happy to see that. I'd Since, like to see, I'd like to see you go in front of a brothel. That would you be a, you did a gas station. You've done some uh, fitness parking lots. We're going to McDonald's today. Are you? Yeah. Uh, and w what will the movement be? Probably it'll have to be something simple. Either, either bench press or I don't want to do deadlift. I don't want to wreck people's backs. Yeah. Maybe maybe pull ups, like. If we go to a random place like a McDonald's or like a Panera Bread or something, you would be surprised. Nobody can do pull-ups. It's like less than 2% of people that come out can do pull-ups. So that's why we don't go there a whole lot because people can't rep it out. The average person in America cannot do one pull-up. Sad. Um, do you ever remember not being able to do a pull-up? I don't. It's not like I came out the gate doing you know 10 pull-ups, but I remember one of my – Limit was about three or four. I was in the barn with my brother, and we taped this. You know, jacks that they, um, not like this, like this, that you jack a car up with. No, no, show me the first one. Which one is it not? Sorry. I can't, I can't do that again. <laughs> um, the, the jack handles that would go in. We stole my dad's car jack, and we taped uh -huh. it up on the rafter, and we made okay. a pull-up bar. Yeah. I would, I would go out there and my Taped brother, it. We, taped yeah. it. It would roll like back and forth sometimes, so we had to duct tape it. Um, did when you were in school, did you have the presidential fitness exam? Yes, we did. Yeah, I missed those days. Because yeah, I had to do the um, I couldn't do a pull up. I had to do the flex arm hang. Hang. Yeah. Yeah, with the girls. How many seconds? Thirty. <sighs> couldn't even win the girls, dude. And then, and and then when I was when I was twenty three years old, um, I, I had a, a roommate who was just juiced to the gills. Uh scott he was weighing the steroids and meth 
Oh, that's so, not, not a good It was combo. pretty crazy. He was crazy. But I really liked him, but it was crazy. And I didn't fuck around with meth or any of that shit. Um, and uh, I just like drinking. But um, then I got some MDMA. Do you know what that is? I've heard of it, yeah. E ecstasy. I think kids today call it Molly. Okay, yeah. For sure. And one day we, I did some of that, and I was in the backyard, and he was doing it. And um, he, he goes, I was, he, he was doing some pull-ups in a tree, and I was watching him. And he said to me, hey, come do some pull-ups with me. And I'm like, I can't do pull-ups. And, he, and he's like, well, hang from the tree. And he stood behind me, and he grabbed my lats. And he said, hey, dude, it's not a pull-up. It's you got to contract that muscle because I was high on fucking MDMA. I could yeah. fucking just go put all my awareness. I don't know if you've ever done that drug, but it's like nicotine on roids. It's like nicotine times 10 million. You can just focus. And I flex those lats and my body went up. Dang, that's crazy. So I guess it was worth it. And I got my first pull up. That's crazy. Could you, do it? Ever Could you do it after that? Yes, yes, I became addicted to pull-ups. I'm the pull-up king. At one time, it, it, it CrossFit HQ, uh, I'll never forget it. They were doing a pull-up, strict pull-up contest in there, and Pat Sherwood, who was a SEAL, had just, like, set whatever the record was in the gym. And I walked in with my just all my shit, and they're like, Sevon, and they knew I was going to pull-ups. They're like, come over here. And I, and I, and I, I mean, he went first, so I knew how many, but whatever it was, I think it was, like, 27 strict pull-ups, and I just did it. Damn, that's and, crazy. And yeah, and I was like, that's wow, all MDMA. I think for the average gym goer, it's about eight or nine. I don't, but, but I, God, I don't even know that, that that's pretty generous. Um, because you're right. I mean, for it was life changing for me finally at 23 or 24 to do a pull up. My whole, all of a sudden, I became a tree climber. I'd never climbed a tree in my life. And all of a sudden, I was climbing trees like it was my, my job. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Well, maybe that started your fitness journey. Yeah, I was already kind of like a, you know what I mean, lap pull down guy. Mm, okay. One of those people. Uh, um you so uh October it's, it's Halloween weekend the, the first battle bunker. Yes. And people can go to Battle Bunker on YouTube and watch it live. Watch it live. Yep. Uh our our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. I'm trying to get it on TikTok, but I don't know how that vertical stuff works. What oh, oh. So for the last, yeah. Yeah, last six months or so, the Battle Bus has really been helping, yeah, build our channels. And the Battle Bunker TikTok is almost at a million. Facebook pages, I think it's at 400K. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Sorry. No, you're good. Hi. Hi. I'm so Can sorry. Text Adam? Uh, okay. No, will you text him? I'll come out to the car now. That's what I mean. I'll text him. You're going to be a few minutes late. Okay, yeah, fucked up. Okay, okay. love you. Bye. Bye. Uh-oh. You're late? Kids' private tennis lesson. I've never been late. Oh no! Two years. Okay, finish that thought. Finish that thought. Um, and then fuck. Was I think? What was I? What was I talking about? Uh, Battle bunker. When oh. it's gonna go live? Yep, it'll go live uh, October 29th, Probably starting around six thirty in the morning. But it'll be a twelve hour stream, which is gonna be uh, brutal. But we're gonna make it happen. Awesome. Um, my goal of every show is is that people come into my living room and they have a good time and they enjoy themselves. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I did. It was fun. Thanks for I having thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, th and thank you for bringing Sarah on. That was really cool. That made me feel like we had built some sort of rapport and trust. I think so, too. Hopefully, you'll come out of the competition. I mean, you are signed up, so we'll see thank you Thank you. Uh, right. and, and, and we'll be in touch. Yes, sir. We'll do. All talk right, brother. Soon. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Holy shit. My wife's never had to call me like that. I'll see you later, Caleb. Bye. I'll see you guys tonight, 5 o'clock. Show, big show tonight.